Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Bibbity Bobbity Books. My name is Ellie and today I'm going to be recommending you some novellas. So I typically prefer to enjoy really big chunky books. I prefer series over standalones generally and so there aren't that many short stories that I've really really gelled with because I tend to find that I just want more from a short story and I just prefer to sink into something a little bit more in depth. That being said I have read quite a few short stories recently that I have actually really enjoyed so I thought I'd put together a list of novellas and short stories that I personally had a lot of fun with in case you're looking for a recommendation because sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of a palette cleanse and to pick up something that you know you can finish in one sitting or in a day and you don't have to dedicate loads of time to. So yeah let's just hop straight in with my first recommendation. So the first book that I want to recommend to you is one that you might have heard me talking about before and that is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. So this is a standalone adult fantasy literary fiction story and it actually made it onto one of my favourite books from last year because I really really enjoyed this when I read it. This is a very quirky and unique story and I don't think it's going to be for everyone because of that but I just thought it was so interesting. So in this story we follow our main character Piranesi who is a man and he lives in this massive house. So the house is his entire world and it's infinitely huge and Piranesi spends his time trying to map out all the hallways and all the different rooms and he considers himself a scientist and he records all of his findings down in a journal and as far as he's aware it's only him and one other human who live in this house and aside from that there's just some fish that live in the ocean that kind of submerges the lower floors and there's birds that are in the upper floors which are kind of up in the clouds and so yeah he has a very isolated existence and what I really enjoyed about this book is it's presented as his journal so you're literally reading his journal entries and you're seeing things through his perspective and you start to see how he slowly comes to realise that things might not be as he thought they were and that's all I'm going to say because it's a short story and I don't want to give too much away but I loved the writing in here and I also really loved the main character of Piranesi and I just thought it was such a unique perspective that he presented so yeah highly recommend this book if you're looking for something a little bit weird. <laughs> Next up we have a sci-fi novella called Emergency Skin written by N.K. Jemisin. So I recently read this one and it's very very short so I don't want to say too much about it because otherwise I'll basically be giving away the whole plot but basically you follow the perspective of a explorer who is going back to Earth. So this explorer is from a colony of people who left Earth centuries ago when it was being ravaged by climate change so they sort of decided to leave because they thought that the planet was inhabitable and basically we're just following this person who is going back to their home planet on a mission that I don't want to say too much about but what I loved about this sci-fi story is that it's all told from the perspective of this explorer and it's told as if it's you this is presented like you are, are going on this mission this is what you see and I just found that a really interesting way to experience a story and yeah I just thought it was really fun it has quite a lot of discussions in there about morality and choices and some of the messages were a little bit on the nose but it was still really fun and entertaining and I highly recommend it. Next up we have Silver and the Wood by Emily Tesh. So this is the first book in a fantasy duology and in this story we follow two main characters. We follow the character of Tobias who is a wild man that lives in the forest and he's essentially like the green man from mythology and he lives a very peaceful life in this hidden cottage in the forest with his pet cat and with his dryad friends and then one day he meets the second character who is a man called Henry Silver and Henry Silver finds him in his cottage and gets to know Tobias and he then ends up getting himself into some trouble as he starts to uncover some secrets about the past and some um, secrets about why Tobias is connected to the forest and 
This is a very slow story, so I don't think it's going to be for everybody, but if you are a fan of nature, I think you're going to love this one because there are so many gorgeous descriptions of the forest and the trees, and it just made me want to go outside and sit underneath a tree and run about barefoot through the forest and listen to the birds because it really just makes you appreciate nature or it did me anyway and I also really enjoyed the characters especially the character of Henry Silver he is such a precious character that we must protect and yeah I really enjoyed this one I remember being quite surprised by how moved I was by some of the bits in this story because um there were some moments where I did actually feel quite emotional I suppose and yeah, it's a really lovely, quiet story and I recommend it. Next up, we have The Wayward Children Books by Shannon Maguire. I'm sure you've probably heard me talking about this series before, but this is a fantasy series um, and it's all novellas, so they're all short stories and it's a portal fantasy and the premise behind this series is that there is a school that has been created for wayward children by a woman called Eleanor West and it's for children who have found themselves in another world. So people who have found a magical doorway that's taken them through into another fantastical world or you know think Alice in Wonderland who fell down the rabbit hole and it's a place for all of these children who have had these experiences but then for some reason have ended up back in the normal world and they can't go back to their fantasy world where they had this amazing adventure and for that reason they really struggle to readjust to normal life and no one really understands them, no one really believes what they're saying. So Eleanor West has created this school for all of these children so that they can be safe and not judged really and they can make connections with other students in this school who all have had fairly similar experiences and yeah it's a really fascinating series because each book follows a different person who attends this school and it explores a different world because obviously it's a portal fantasy and what I really enjoy about this one is that it blends that whimsy fairy tale type story with some darker and some quite heavy themes and I just find that such an interesting blend it's almost like she uses the fantasy genre to explore these issues that a lot of us might be able to relate to be that um, trauma mental health not, not fitting in um all sorts of things really uh, you know parental pressures and yeah it's really really interesting and i've read the first three books in this series and loved the first two wasn't so keen on the third one but will absolutely be carrying on with this series and i recommend it to you if you're looking for a nice quick whimsical but also quite intriguing series. Next up I want to recommend to you What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. So this is a horror short story and it's a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. So if you're familiar with that story then you might know what to expect from this one. But essentially we follow our main character who is an ex-soldier and they find out that their childhood friend is really really unwell so they decide to go and visit her in her family's home and when they arrive at this house they realise that something is off. So there's something strange happening to their friend, she is speaking in these weird languages, she's up during the night sleepwalking and her brother's acting really shady and really weird and our main character basically finds themselves in this nightmare of fungal growths and possessed animals and it's really eerie and creepy and kind of gothic in feel and really atmospheric so if you're looking for a quick horror then I would recommend that one. Next up we have a book that I've recently read so apologies if you've already heard me talking about this one quite recently but this is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This is such a great book. This is a book that's difficult to classify because it's kind of got horror elements in it, it reads like a literary fiction, it also has a big focus on relationships in here and it's contemporary, it's got a modern setting but it has fantastical elements in there so it's really hard to sort of describe precisely what category this book falls into but I love this one. Again I don't think this one's going to be for everyone because it's quite slow and the writing style is quite distinctive, there's quite long paragraphs, it's 
white, relatively flowery writing, but I just love this one. This is a story that follows two main characters. We have one perspective, which is from the character of Leah, who is a marine biologist, and she goes on this deep sea mission that ends in catastrophe. And then we follow the perspective of her wife, who is a woman called Mira, and we're following her as she is trying to look after Leah following her mission, her deep sea mission, and we see how the deep sea mission has changed Leah and how it has affected their relationship as a couple. And it's an incredibly moving and heartbreaking story. And I felt like there were lots of parallels with, you know, supporting someone who has a terminal illness. There's lots of discussion about grief and how, you know, you're not given the luxury of grieving someone who isn't yet gone. And yeah, there's a lot to unpack with this one. I thought the characters felt so realistic, so well fleshed out, so interesting. And it was, yeah, it wasn't like anything that I've read before and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, if you're looking for something that's weird and eerie, but also hits heavy and tackles some difficult themes, I would recommend this one. So yeah, love this one. Next up we have a fantasy novella called The Deep written by Rivers Solomon and colleagues and this is a really interesting one actually. This is a another book that uses the fantasy genre to explore some interesting themes. In this one it is primarily focusing on the theme of generational trauma. So in this book we follow a colony of water-breathing mer people and they have all descended from African slave women who were tossed overboard by slave owners and because their collective past is so traumatic this group of mer people have decided to let go of their memories of the past so they take part in this joint amnesia where everybody forgets where they came from and it's the job of one person in particular known as the historian to hold on to all of those memories for the sake of the colony. And then there is this ceremony that happens once a year where the historian tells everybody their history and shares that with the the group and everybody has to um, process all of that trauma together but then after a few days of sitting with it they then give their memories back to the historian so that they can get on with their lives in blissful, blissful ignorance and in this story we follow the perspective of someone who is taking on this historian role and we see how much that affects them and how difficult it is to hold on to these, this trauma and yeah, it's a really interesting one. It's really thought provoking. It's quite heavy at times. So definitely check out the trigger warnings for this one. But I just thought it was a really unique way to explore some interesting themes. So yeah, I would recommend that to you if you think that sounds interesting. Next up, we have a novella called The Empress of Salt and Fortune, written by Nevo. So this is the first book in a duology that is set in this fantastical world that is inspired by Imperial China. And in the first book, we follow a cleric who is trying to gather information about an empress who recently passed away. So they are going around gathering information from different people. They end up coming across this woman who used to be the Empress's handmaiden. And it's very much a story about the importance of memories, about, you know, different people's histories. So yes, you might have the histories that are written by the historians, but it's also, you know, equally important, if not more important, to get the history from people. So, you know, people's personal experiences and memories that they have of someone and, you know, all of those moments that might get neglected by, you know, the glossing over of a historian, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's very much about love of storytelling. Again, it's quite a quiet novel, but what I really enjoyed about this one was the female characters and how there was a big focus on female friendship or just female relationships in general in this book, which is something that I feel like you don't see a lot in stories. So I really enjoyed that. And yeah, I thought it was whimsical and definitely not for you if you're not a fan of the whimsy writing style though, because it does have that kind of um, that, that feel and, you know, it's not always clear cut because it's all about storytelling and stories and it's not like a straight narrative, if that makes sense. So if that's not your jam, then you might want to give this one a miss. But I personally thought that it was a really lovely story and I enjoyed it.
Next up we have um, a book duology that you've probably heard me rabbiting on about for ages so I'm sorry if you've heard me talking about this before but this is the Monk and the Robot series by Becky Chambers which starts with A Psalm for the Wild Built and continues on with A Prayer for the Crown Shy. So this is such a lovely sci-fi duology and um, they're really short so really easy to consume and they're also just really wholesome. So in this first book we follow a monk who decides to leave the city and to take on a new job as a travelling tea monk. So they basically travel from village to village, um, setting up these little tea stations at each village and providing a listening ear to anybody who needs it. And they basically present people with a specially brewed cup of tea and they'll sit and chat with them about their worries, which is so sweet. And then while the tea monk is on their travels, they end up going in into the forest and they run into a robot and this is a really big deal because robots and humans haven't spoken in centuries essentially when robots became sentient and they woke up they decided to take themselves off from humanity and live separately and so this is the first time a human and a robot have interacted together and it's just so lovely seeing them getting to know each other and they have lots of lovely conversations about what it means to be alive what it means to have consciousness um, about what what purpose you have in your life and it's just a, a beautiful story about friendships and what I loved about this story as well is the robot's love of nature and how that really shines through the pages and it just makes you want to appreciate all the little things and see things from a slightly different perspective so yeah I really really love this little sci-fi series so if you're looking for something that's cozy and comforting then maybe check out this series if you haven't already. Okay, and the final novella that I wanted to recommend to you is Burning Roses by S.L. Huang. So this is a queer folklore blend. And we follow two main characters. The first is Rosa, who is essentially Red Riding Hood. And the second is Ho Yi, who is this famous archer. And the two of them join forces to try and protect the land from these sunbirds. So they're kind of like monster killers, I suppose. And what I really enjoy about this is that it's a blend of Western fairy tales with Chinese mythology because of course we've got the Red Riding Hood character who's from Western fairy tales but you also see characters from um, Goldilocks and also Beauty and the Beast and then you also have the character of Ho Yi who is this famous mythological archer from Chinese mythology so it's a really nice blend, a really nice mix of different folklore and fairy tales and another reason why I really enjoyed this one is because the two main characters are actually older women so um, they're in their middle ages and that gives them the gift of hindsight and they use quite a lot of their wisdom and their knowledge of the past and it's just really nice to see some older characters in fantasy particularly in um, like fairy tale retellings because I feel like most fairy tales or fairy tale retellings are coming of age stories you often have very young protagonists so it's really nice to see you know some women in their middle ages. I also quite enjoyed that the character of Ho Yi is gender swapped and yeah it's just a fun one so if you're a fan of fairy tales then maybe give this one a try. Okay so that brings me to the end of this video. I really hope that you found some recommendations here. If you have any recommendations for me please do let me know in the comments section down below because I'm always on the hunt for book recommendations and I do like to pick up a novella as a little bit of a palette cleanse between my chunky books. So yeah if you've read any that you think that I would enjoy please do let me know. I hope that you're having a fantastic day whatever it is you are doing. If you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like it because it does really help out my channel and consider to subscribing if you haven't already if you want to see more from me and yeah wish you all the best and I guess I'll see you next time with another video bye